Hello and welcome. Today we're going to go over a guide on how to build a city, okay, for your D&D worlds, TT, whatever, right, Pathfinder, whatever. Okay, so how this video structure is going to be outlined. There's a thing down there for the chapters and I suggest you use them, okay? So in general, number one, the general layout of the city, how it's going to be structured and where everything is, okay? Number two, poor versus rich, right, where are they going to be? Three, major players in the town, right, for example, gangs or a rich district or big players in the game okay number four where is the center of power in the city right number five i'll go through what happened in this city for my players and show you examples of that right and number six i'll go with other stuff okay so before we get to that today's video sponsor is myself are you a dungeon master that has been frustrated by DD mass combat rules well worry no longer i have a solution for you dms the squad combat module lets you run mass combat quickly with massive customization options do you like additional D&D supplements that improve the immersion and realism of your games? Want maps for your D&D adventures? Reduce your prep time, improve your games, and become a Patreon member today by clicking the link below in the description to join. And a big shout out to my patrons that make all this content possible, right? Um, you can go and check out my Patreon if you would like some stuff for your D&D. Um, otherwise, you can also check out this map and my Patreon right here if you go to my channel and click that incarnate thing, you'll be able to use if you have Incarnate, you'll be able to download and edit these maps, right, for them. If you don't um, and you want these maps, you know, you can you go to my Patreon, right, and basically get the map pack right there and have all the maps in there. And there'll be even more maps added later, right, for uh, dun dun Dungeon Fog and all that other stuff, okay? Otherwise, let's get back to it, all right? So, this general layout of the city, right? So, I worked on this city... <laughs> for a very long time it went into stages okay i do not expect all of you dms and gms out there to put this much time and effort into it okay because this was insane first i started with this basic city layout okay i said i wanted to start out with just a layer okay out here and then then make that that okay but <laughs> me being a perfectionist and wanting things bigger i kept building and building and building until we came out with this stuff okay but generally, how does this city lay out, okay? I'll go over it very generally here, okay? This main road leads out to the main road that I've covered in my uh, region map mode, which you can go click on that card right there, and it'll take you to that, okay? But this connects to the main roads that lead out of Athens, okay? And these little white things with white cobblestone is the main roads, okay? Um, there's not other, all the other stuff is basically just fields, okay? Because they didn't have a lot of money, right? Main roads connect everything to each other, right? They connect the main things to each other. That's why those main roads are out there, okay? Also, another general layout, right? How does this work, okay? As you can see, there's Western Greenfield, Northern Greenfield, Oak Town, King Town, Hollow Town, right? All this stuff are just towns, okay? As you can see, a general structure layout for these towns is, uh, or these little areas, right, is that there would be a red market, right? A market, a temple, um, blacksmith, firehouse, all of this taverns, right? All this stuff out here, generally. Okay, um, I would mark out stuff that would be important, right? Um, I would do Carter's Tower. Carter's Tower is like a wizard tower that the players could go to. They could go to Red Market Square if they wanted to buy stuff. There's a blacksmith out here. There's a tavern out here. There's a temple, a lumber mill, and there's a police outpost in jail, right? Um, so that's how those general outlying areas worked, okay? Now, um, there was a big coliseum in the field of Athena out here, okay? Now... How does the other stuff work, okay? As you can see, this little blue stuff out here. These blue houses that were on the outer side of Athens were the middle class for this era, okay? And Blueberry Town. Um, by middle class, I mean they weren't dirt poor <laughs> and they had some means, okay? And they would work inside the major city, okay? They would live, they would walk through the main gate and work in the city, okay? So that's how that was distinct. Right, the poor areas were out in the outer stuff, outer field of the city, which is generally how it works even today. More outside and then inside, it becomes more expensive. Right, New York City is a great example. You want to live in New York City? Well, boy, you're going to pay a lot of money on the outskirts of town where you have to take the metro in, which is what most people do. Costs less, right? So lower class out here, um, middle class out here, and then in the center of the town would be the rich. Okay, this is where the rich would stay. Okay some of the rich and this will be where the major towns were major shops and guilds and banks and everything was okay um some of the rich people would stay here depends um but mostly it would be the political elite that would stay out here and also some rich people okay 
and they had an opera house, right? And you can see the Castro Praetorio is basically a massive barracks for Praetorian guards. We'll talk about them in the later, okay? I promise, I promise we'll talk about them later. Um, Victory Avenue for, you know, basically a monument to Athenian victories, right? Tower of Magi, Senate. Um, we'll talk all about this stuff in detail, okay? But basically, um, Western and we Upper West Solis, right? Again, rich people and the very elite politically, okay? Also out here would be Red Hawk District, okay? Red Hawk District, as you can see, has its own walls, okay? It has its own walls and stuff that it's doing, okay? has its own stables, bakeries, firehouses, blacksmiths, you know, pretty much everything, right? And the reason it is is because the rich people have decided to seal themselves off from the lower classes, we will say, right? If you need a real-life example of this, all you need to look up is gated communities. Um, but yeah, they didn't like the people out there and they wanted to be there by themselves. And we're talking the upper crust here, okay? We're talking people, these, these are mansions out here. These little buildings out here are mansions. They have their own maids and servants and tutors and everything. Okay, that was the upper class, right? So that's just how the general city was laid out, right? Um, one last thing for the general city is that these ports out here, Washington Ironworks and Nelson Ironworks, are the big, big companies, okay? They're the big companies that, you know, exist because I wanted them to exist, the stock market and magic, right? Uh, but basically, they were one of the major employers of everyone here. You worked more for one of the two of them, okay? Um, in the shipbuilding industry and the shipping industry because you're commercial because Athens was a commercial city and that's reflected in the game for me okay so that's just the general layout of the town and I'll get more in specifics when we want to talk about uh, number five like the city and my players right but for that we'll continue okay number two poor versus rich as I've alluded to there is a lot of uh, class discrimination here okay first Outside, out of the outer villages out here, you can see a fighting pit is out there for the, 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 the poor people would go to, right? Um, and these classes all divide themselves pretty much, right? As you can clearly see, um, the middle class basically is able to afford at least a road out to them, right? And they live near the Athenian walls, okay? Um, and that's what I wanted, right? Because that's basically what happens, right? And as you go further out, it gets poorer and poorer, right? You can see up here... If I scroll up, this Golden Field tribe that's out here on the thing was a tribe. They were a second-class citizen. They were Leonin, okay? They're basically Leonin mercenaries, and they lived out <laughs> they lived out in tribes and tents, right? And they're not recognized as full citizens here. At least these peasants and people that were poor were at least citizens. They weren't even granted that, right? Um, and then the middle class, and I've alluded to, the upper class would be here, the political elite. And then if you wanted to have even more money and live in your own mansion away from everyone... With your own guards and stuff you could do that out there right um so that's how that was done again the police also were a thing right the police jailhouses would be out here and as you can see that there is no police units out here that are in the outer district very simple reason for that okay the police are not going to the outer district okay it's the same way in chicago the police aren't gonna build their headquarters in the poorest neighborhoods okay chicago is the exact same way cities you can look to right um because they you know people need to get there needs to be safe whole bunch of other reasons okay but basically they're there to protect the middle and upper class let's be honest that's what the city is okay um in the outer city basically if it's not controlled by police who are going to take over gangs gangs take over um gangs make everything run they make the businesses you know pay them stuff pay them a tithe and all that other stuff all that good fun stuff you can make um D, &D and gm elements out of right um they do there okay um that's what the outer city and the poor versus rich, right? And then again, there's two specific things, okay? This Castro Praetoria is Praetorian guards. You, you know, you love them, Praetorian guards. They guard the Senate and they guard the main city, okay? Their patrol duties is this main city, okay? They don't leave it. It's not their job, okay? That's what the police out here are for. Police also per, uh, are also in the major city. But again, for senatorial business and all the political elite, they have guards from the Castro Praetoria, okay? Next out here on this right side is Legio 1 Athenia's Defenders, okay? This is a military, a whole military unit, okay, stationed out here. If I remember correctly, it was a whole division. I think it was like 6,000, 10,000 people. I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, basically, they are charged with the city's defenses, okay? No, I say city's defenses. They are set out here, right? So, because legionaries, fun fact, are not um, middle class. Some are. Uh, depends on their rank, but a lot of them are not. They're poor. 
right? Castor Praetoria, different. Castor Praetoria, all of them are basically the sons of the the sons and daughters of the elite, okay? Legionaries, not so. They live out here. And their main job is to protect the city if it comes down to it, okay? They work with the Praetorians and they protect this main city, okay? The rest of this could burn, okay? All from all they care, okay? They will try to defend it, but if it comes down to it, they're going to defend the main city, okay? Because that's the main important bit, right? And as you can see, this city is very, very well defended, okay? You can see that it has towers and walls, okay? Not only does it have that, it has a ditch. Oh my god, a ditch. Can movie people build a ditch? Because that would defend, help defend your uh, cities and everything you build a whole lot better. They have a ditch, and this one is running water because they are near the ocean. So, it's a ditch on the outer side of the city. What does this do? Prevents people from just climbing the walls with ladders and building a siege tower. They need to fill the ditch, go across it, then get to the wall, right? Um, and there's only one bridge in and out of the city, okay? This makes getting into the city very difficult. Basically, they have to be inspected by police. My players had to do this every single time they went into the city. And they were like, wow, dude, that's great. But here is a thing you can do. If the players, right, if you say you have to go through the checkpoints, you raise your hands, blah, 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 blah. And you do it enough times, people become, you know, less observant. They're like, I'll just go through the gate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then you could have something happen, right? You could say instead of the police doing it, right, um, and the players wouldn't notice, their people have been swapped out and the procedures are a little different, right? And your players weren't paying attention. They're just like, this is the normal stuff, right, um, for what's happening. And again, that's a massive story element you could do, right? Um, don't, you know, be like, oh, it takes 10 minutes and you play out the whole scene every single time. Be like, no, you're just going through the gate, right? They're like, yeah, you just raise your arms and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And you're through the gate. Same thing. Do it. It works great. Trust me. It works amazing. I did it for my players. They're like, wow, that's not good. Oh, no. For example, my players, there was a big uh, thing we'll get to, right? I'll get to it in number five uh, and tell you the whole story of what happened. But Basically, my players fought a gang, and stuff happened, burning, riots, whole stuff. And my players come to the front gate, and they see two um, constructs of sentinels. And they're like, oh, wow, that's not okay, right? And then um, they didn't let any of the Leonin in the city, right? Because remember, the Leonin are second-class citizens, and they're out there, right? One of my players was a Leonin, and they're like, oh, fun. The police talk for a bit, and they're like, cool. You can enter the city. One of these constructs is coming with you the entire time and they don't have to leave your side because you have guild hall business, right? Because the guild hall would be down here, which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, again, things you can do for your story trip, right? And then basically that's going to be the um, poor versus rich kind of thing and a whole bunch of other stuff I just talked about on a tangent, okay? <sighs> Number three, the major players, okay? So, major players, as I've alluded to, you have gangs and the rich and the political stuff right gangs would be out here to do their own stuff in the fighting pits and police their own stuff right they make money doing it um rich would be out here doing their own stuff the middle class was doing some other stuff in blueberry town and stuff making their own money right trying to get by poor same way right um so you can individually place different gangs where you want the players like let's say for example as you can see down here there's something called house okay um, my players used to live in this house right here. Okay, they used to live in this house by the leaky trireme. They lived out here, they were poor. Um, so they lived out here, they pissed one of the gangs off. That gang had this whole thing, and the players had to fight the gang and gang up with people to take them down. Okay, and they became their own gang affiliated stuff, right? Massive story elements you could do here, right? You could say that the ironworks is like brutalizing its people or something, or they're doing something illegal. Gangs out here, police, you know, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Just make sure you have major players in your city, right? The rich out here, Red Hawk District, um, the political elite out here in the Senate, right? And, you know, um, the Tower of Magi I'll talk about for my players. And, you know, gangs and stuff out here and how they're all going to interact with each other and how they interact, okay? Um, that's what I would go with, okay? And four, the city, the center of power, okay? Very obviously, the center of power is in this main little district, okay, in the city, okay? So, how it really broke down was the Senate, the Tower of Magi, okay? 
Um, my players went to the High Temple, I think, a few times. The Athenian Library, a few times. They went to their Guild Hall, of course, the Achilles Guild Hall. Um, they didn't go to the Castro Pretoria. They went to the Red Tavern, Red Hawk Tavern. They went to the Auction House and the Bank, okay? Um, but they didn't go to the universities and stuff, right? Again, just generally, right? But the center of power is in this little area, this main upper hill right here. This was the center of power. So everything was done, um, and it was the main source of power, right? So when the players went up there, they were created by Praetorians every single time. And they're also um, defenders of the Athenian, all women's feet, all all women's all women's military unit in honor of Athena, right? Uh, took their own vows. Think um, Roman. I cannot remember their names. Um, the the virgins that uh, were in Rome. Okay, they did they did all the temple work. Think of that, but military with their own special stuff and high quality magic gear. Okay. Uh, that worked along with the Praetorians, but they defended the statues and stuff, right? Um, and that was their main job, right? Again, think of where your center of power is going to be, right? If all of this stuff is happening out here, it's okay, right? But the center of power and where everything is aside, it needs to be somewhere. You need to defend it, right? This Tower of Magi hosted the Magi, right? Or the Tower of the Magi, right? He was the one, or in this case, female um, person in the Senate that related to all magical elements that, that could advise the Senate, right? They had a tower up there and they advised them, right? And the Senate was there, the high temples and everything. Anyway, all you need to know, center of power. This is it, right? If they burn the center of power down, this whole city is going into chaos, okay? If the whole city is burning down, they're having problems, but the government still works. If the government no longer works, it, this is, goes to anarchy real quick, okay? And now number five, okay, this city in particular, as I've alluded to, okay, I will cover my player's journey in the city and you will see all of the stuff that they interacted with, okay? And it may not be what you're thinking and blah, 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 right? Okay, so I'll start from the beginning. My players decided, and I talked with them, blah, 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 okay? We were going to be working for a guild hall, guild mercenaries, right? So first mission they were assigned to at level three was to uh, go in the sewers and kill ghasts. Um, and they did that with some help, right, from like two archers because I had two players and the other player wasn't there for a little bit, okay? But all you need to know is that they went in there, killed the ghasts, and they went to the Achilles Guild Hall, okay? They got to the Guild Hall. They're like, hey, these are the other adventurers you'll be working with. They met Bell, Bell Cornell, right? You should know that name um, from Damachi. Um, and they met... Um, other adventurers and they're like okay so these are the people that are going to be you know they had a little rank structure right for the guild hall where the players were going to be they were little bronze tablets right and they could link up the platinum and a whole bunch of other stuff right and uh they found out they could get food there store their weapons you know all that fun stuff and get contracts the most important bit right so that's what they did right and i said okay cool so they go out of the town and they go back to their house they're like here are the keys go to the house and relax move in Okay, players get to the house, and um, I think my players need a healer. I have done a D and D stories on this. You can go check that out playlist. It's a little short playlist. Um, but basically, I think my players need a life cleric. So I make a life cleric show up. She's a little tiny uh, teenage girl. She shows up there, and she's like, "Hey, uh, they told me to come over here and said to help you." And they said, "Cool. Well, we're not abandoning her." And I'll get long story short, this girl becomes an adopted daughter of one of my players, okay? Uh, and becomes one of the one of the consuls of the Athenian Empire later. Um, very cool, actually, how that story ends. But um, that's what happened, okay? So as you go out there, the players then are like, cool, what's happening, right? So they go to the... Um, they go talk to a tribe out here, the Golden Field Tribe, right? They're trying to see what's happening out there, um, and, you know, come back, right? They come back, um, go to the Leaky Trireme, right? Leaky Trireme, some gangsters come in, as I, they do something uh, that I thought was a little cheeky and not fun, but I didn't think the players would stab them in broad daylight. My players stabbed them in broad daylight in a tavern, and everyone watched. This triggered a gang war. Gang war happens out in the Leaky Trireme. Play, the taverness was like, hey, you stabbed them in my tavern. We're all going to pay. Go get some people. My players go to Oak and Shield Black and Blacksmith, right? Because he's the only other thing named out here. And they're like, hey, dude, will you help us? And he's like, hell no. And they're like, well, we killed a person in broad daylight. He's like, well, they're going to burn everything down now, so I really don't have a choice, do I? Right? So he says, hey, go get some other people to help you, right? See if anyone else wants to help. 
they met another person that was shadowing them here, which we'll come back to later, right? Um, players go into the guild air hall area. They're like, hey, can anyone help us? Bell's like, yeah, sure, buddy. I'll go help you. Oh, boy. Oh, gee. Um, so my players gather some allies, right? They meet out here in the leaky trireme, and they have a battle in the street that I've done a thing on. Um, after the battle, after they win, or, or losing, winning, whatever, uh, one of the people comes in, okay? One of this person comes in and absolutely decks these people. They have a construct and kill them and, you know, take all the people. Fire flare gun up in the uh, air. And they say, hey, you should probably get out of here, but, you know, we'll probably meet again. And they said, oh, wait, bet. And they all leave, right? And they get arrested. The uh, gang members get arrested and all that other stuff, right? Anyway, so my players are like, cool, that happened. That was interesting. Um, so after that, my players go back to the guild hall the next, you know, day with the heightened security. You know, obviously from fighting in the gang areas and burning stuff down and, you know, sending people being called. Um, they go to the guild hall. And they're like, oh, okay, so what is the mission, right? And they say, hey, I need you to go to the island of Salamis, right? Uh, video previously um, in this series on the region map mode. Anyway, they go to Salamis. Um, they do a whole bunch of stuff there. They meet up with this uh, chick again, right? That helps save them, basically. Um, they come back from the island, and this city is on fire. It is having a very bad time. Um, it is having a race riot, okay? Um... I don't know if you could say that on YouTube, but that's what happened, okay? So, my players arrive, and they're like, oh, okay, everything is burning. Um, there was massive riots, okay? Um, it was all started because uh, some police people, can you imagine, beat up someone, um, someone a second-class citizen, and they had enough of it, okay? And remember, second-class citizens are dwarves, elves, and satyrs, and Leonin, and literally everyone that wasn't a human or a demi-human. Everyone was second-class, okay? Other humans started a riot, too, over, like, you know pay being treated like you know crap and all that other stuff right so they had a race riot um and a riot in general and my players arrived and they're like oh well this isn't good and they're like yeah and then uh mark anthony was like mark anthony lands and my players were like okay what should we do and he's like he eats an apple he says i don't know get your ass to the senate i have some stuff to do he gets some praetorians and uh let's just say politely cuts his way through the crowd to the athenian uh university um, and is going to make his way to the Senate, okay? My players are like, mm, maybe we shouldn't do that. So my players, one of my players named Tino, uh, he wanted to be the political person, and I was like, huh, how are you going to be a political person if you, you know, beat all the citizens to death, right? Anyway, so he gets his group of uh, legionaries. I think they're policemen, right, because they're from this jailhouse right here. This is where you have all this stuff outlined, right? They're from this jailhouse, and they make their way up these western prequels, right, all the way to um, the Senate, right, because their objective was to get to the university which they did without bloodshed right they had their batons or whatever and they get here and they're like hey go to the bank there's some units there's some police guys that need help there right so they make their way players are doing stealth checks and everything they can anyway eventually they fail and a big crowd comes up okay they start hitting the police unit with you know rocks and stuff okay and eventually they start trying to actually attack the police people my friend you know said all right we have lost the situation um, so you know how the police use water cannons and tear gas and then rubber bulls as a last resort? That's basically what happened. Uh, they are using batons, they weren't effective, and then he said, alright, go to lethal only. So they throw their peel them, and they get their gladiuses out and cut through the crowd, okay? That makes the crowd run away, obviously. Um, they get back, they push them to the bank. Um, police guys have been murdered by civilians at this point, okay? They have been bashed in and they found a few guys alive, okay? They took the alive survivors. Um, and they got all the way to the Senate steps, okay? They were meted by this, the statue of Athena's um, guardians, okay? So they're the guardians of Athena, right? Full female unit, fully decked out in, in, in uh, magic war gear, okay? They were not to be fucked with, okay? There was a reason that this whole side was not being rioted on by anybody, um, uh, but they were keeping their distance, right? So the guys made it through. They get up here, and they're like, hey... Uh, these guys need help, right? So they put them down or whatever. And uh, basically, uh, Mark Anthony's up here. He gets up there from the University of Athena and is like, hey, guys, uh, what's up? And he's covered in blood and whatever. And they're like, oh, cool. Anyway, my players go into the Senate because the Senate's in session. They're like, hey, dude, what the fuck happened on the Salamis? They explain the situation with the Dragonborn, right, doing all of their fuckery and stuff. And they're like, okay, it is time to declare martial law, okay? And they say, Mark Anthony, 
right? Because there's another person in here, long story short. Um, one of the people that was in charge of the actual group of senators, uh, not group of senators, one of the persons that was in charge of the Senate protection detail and uh, senatorial office, basically there are a whole bunch of officers, which is where my players will again meet the people they went to Salmas Island with, right? Those five people show up to their senator officers, okay? Those people basically are quote-unquote mass effect specters. They are above the law and they get stuff done that needs to get done from the Senate, okay? And they have Senate approval and they're like, hey, they're like, oh, my players are like, okay, oh my God, we are in somewhere we should not be, right? And uh, so martial law was declared. Um, they go outside and he's, the little uh, female is like five foot and would kill everyone. Literally could have taken out my entire PC group if she wanted to. Was like, all right, cool, follow me. They go outside. He's like, Mark Anthony, um, you need to declare martial law and get these people out of here. Um, so Mark Anthony screams, hey, Praetorians, tell them it's martial law time. And so they scream, it's martial law. Decease and desist. You go home. Okay? They wait about two minutes. People are not doing that. <laughs> Praetorians are loyal to the Senate, not to the people. And they say, cool. Fantastic. They draw their gladiuses and, or sorry, they pick up their pilum and throw it and decimate everyone as rioting. And as the people are running away, they grab their gladiuses and Demi, they're, yeah, they grab their gladiuses and you could figure out what's going to happen from there. And they push the crowd back out of the city, okay? Um, yeah, let's just say this day, this day was not very good. It was called one of the bloodiest days in, a, in Athens, okay? Anyway, my player was like, okay, cool. I don't want any part of this, but, you know, eh. And then the little chick was like, hey, the one person that started this riot was a second class citizen, a Leonin. Um, you need to go take care of this problem. Uh, and I have nothing to do with this. And if you want to take care of this problem, you need to meet these people back near Wolftown. My player was like, okay, well, I don't really want to do it, but how much money we're talking? Oh, 50,000 gold. I see. So we go down to Wolftown. Other players are like, you know what, bro? I don't feel like murdering someone. So they don't. Anyway, the player and his adopted daughter, not at this point, but probably that follows him, is like, cool. For Athens. They go there. They say, no names. They take care of the problem, is what I will say, and get rewarded, right? After. And of course, when martial law is declared, uh, the crowds disperse, but yeah, not very good. Um, but yeah, so my players go back there um, to their house, and my player that actually did the act was like, I feel dirty. I feel dirty. And I was like, oh, you do? Uh, anyway, next day he walks into town with the Bank of Athens, or sorry, the Bank of Athens comes to him and gives him a crate full of 50,000 gold, and he's like, I feel better now. Um, but yeah, they have enough money to buy a house and stuff, like an actual big, big house, right? Um, and that's the story of this side, right? Um, and that's pretty much the story of everything that's going to happen here um, in this little city. Again, massive amount of work and detail went into this, right? Um, but my players didn't really take, again, kind of my fault as a DM, right? But we didn't explore a lot of the city, right? Um, kind of went into a, a bigger scale very quickly, right? Um, kind of my fault, but hey, that's just how it is, right? Um, so after my players left that, uh, did that mission, they went out the city and, you know, Marathon, Black Forest, all that other stuff, right? They came back here and were like, hey, yo, bro, uh, what's happening here? And they're like, uh, X is happening. You can now be a senatorial staff because of what you did uh, by taking care of the problem. And yeah, and this Tower of Magi, they became friends with this tower, with this Magi that was level 20 sorcerer that could <laughs> pretty much blow everything away if she wanted to. But didn't want to do that, right? Uh, that's the Tower of Magi for you, right? And my players, basically, um, for the rest of the time, they had a house out here, but they never used it. Um, and they basically just kept coming to the main center, right? The, cent the, the, the seat of powers I've alluded to, right? The center of powers where they kept going to every mission. Um, big missions, right? Senatorial missions. They would report there, blah, blah, blah. Go to their house, grab something, and go. Pretty much how it happened, right? Uh, and this other stuff was used. But that's why I followed the DM. But everything was out there for me to use if I ever needed it, right? I had all these taverns out here, had anything I could do, start some more gang wars and stuff out here, and all this other stuff I could have done, right? But I didn't in general, right? Uh, but that's how you should at least lay out the city, okay? So number six, um, let's go over some general other stuff, right? Um, as I've alluded to, um, focus on your main city, okay? So how I would do this is if you're going to build a map like this, you should focus on the main city first, okay? As I've alluded to, 
this main thing is the actual main city where everything is going to take place. Okay. Um, work on this. Have it highly detailed. The Victory Avenue was for the victory Athena Athens did. Okay, to gain their independence in like year zero. Okay, when they fought a whole bunch of other stuff, mythical stuff. Okay, Thermistocles, Thermistocles Field of Remembrance. Okay, this right here was used for um, basically the first war of and against Sparta. Thermistocles beat Sparta, right, and he is remembered right here um, in this field. Right, major site play players can go to. Athenian Library, Temple, the Bank, and the University. All places my players visited at least once, right? And they and they got their use out of them. Library for research, Temple for, you know, praying and getting buffs, uh, Bank for obvious reasons, for money and loans and investments and all that stuff, and University um, for basically seeing all the, seeing if more um, educated people would be there, right? And the Guild Hall. And the Guild Hall they would always go to for contracts, right? In the hospital they went to the hospital uh, for in this um i'll get maybe get into it later but basically uh players had to do long rests and do a whole bunch of stuff for their hp that didn't work out really in the end but hey uh yeah that's what the hospital was they visited there a couple times for the people that got injured right the police unit they saved um was there um and some general other things i would recommend right always build a ditch wherever if your city has a wall it needs a ditch if you want the ditch to be better get water always do that okay there's really no reason you shouldn't be built a ditch okay literally dirt in the ground will be a ditch and it will do its job okay and have bridges over it that's all you need you don't need it to be this defensive layered like i was with towers and ballistas and stuff you just need a ditch a way across it that's it okay and remember to think about big major elements you want to do in your story where are the big primary people and gangs are okay are they in the outer city are they in the inner city are they going to be some major elements going to be in the red hawk district are they going to be in golden crest right are they going to be in northern greenfield are they going to go to the fighting pits just think about all that stuff right um you don't need to design all of the city in once right just think big players where are they going to be x y and z right and then you can expand it out from there and that's what i would recommend you do okay um and then obviously all the harbors and stuff right for you know piracy and all the trade and stuff right um and you can have harbors out here for cranes to build these okay another one of these important things out here is that these are shipbuilding little things okay there's a reason they are square is because they are meant to build warships of different sizes okay um that's for the athenian navy that's why they're all a little square and compact right and all that stuff and it's their primary job is to build that and other ships of course right and they were all protected right by this wall because again they are companies, and when we think companies, you, the reason I was thinking of was like 1800s American companies that had their own private military companies to police their own workforce, right? Um, and that's what I was thinking out here. So again, you can do a lot of major elements in your city, and it's probably one of the most important things for you to do um, is to think about the actual city, right? Region is important. World map is less so important, right? But kind of, right? Region is pretty important. City is one of your most important things you could possibly do. Okay, um, because it's basically where everything is going to happen for major big story elements that you want to tell, right? Unless you're trying to do it at like out in the forest or whatever, right? Um, just remember that. Otherwise, um, I think that is it. I may go into another detailed video about a different city um, and talk about more stuff there. If you guys like that, if you have some questions, leave them below. Otherwise, up there should be a link back to take you back to my um, region for Athens, right? Uh, and also my Patreon is up there if you would like so kindly to visit it. And check out from all the benefits that you could possibly get out of it, all right? Other than that, uh, please leave a like, comment, tell me stuff you didn't like, uh, you know, leave stuff, uh, comments, tell me if you did everything else for your different cities. Otherwise, you people have a nice day.